So in the interest of time, while this is to prevent dead air going out, um, let me just point out that uh, uh, Public Invention was working on a lot of projects, uh, some of which you're gonna see here before the pandemic. What you've just seen is the projects done in the last year in response to the pandemic. Uh, but we were doing other things and we're doing other things as well. Um, we've got in fact 56 projects, um, uh, two of which you're gonna see uh, from Rice University in a minute. Um, but we have other projects that we don't have a leader or an invention coach for, and we don't have public inventors to work on. So we, we call uh, volunteers public inventors and the leader of a project is an invention coach. Um, so uh, one of the reasons we're holding this conference is to try to recruit more public inventors and invention coaches. But everybody I know is busy. One thing that we do is we accept ideas and we just put them in our giant spreadsheet of ideas for other people to work on. As long as you agree that you are donating your idea under an open source license for anybody to use, uh, then we'll add it to our, our list to potentially work on. So if you have an invention idea that you do not want to, for example, patent yourself or try to build yourself and you're willing to just give it to the world for free so that people can use it, um, if you agree to that, you can send it to us and we will add it to our list of invention ideas. And there's a link to that in the um, slides and if someone wants to volunteer or knows someone who wants to volunteer, you might look at that. We have projects that include art, um, serious mathematics, a lot of sanitation projects, robotics, and energy, um, and now medical devices. Um, uh, you know, one of the beautiful things about this world is that there's no limit to the work to be done. Okay. So I'm gonna get ready to um, ha start talking about um, the next group. Okay, so let me introduce Mark Jones. Um, Mark is on the board of Public Invention. Um, he's an intellectual property attorney who's done some pro bono work for the Free Software Foundation. And uh, he helped uh, organize Public Invention. And he and I wrote a paper at Libre Planet uh, last year related to this and out of the absolute necessity of some of the pandemic uh, work, we believe that a new kind of copyleft license uh, may be required. Um, and so I'm pleased to say that Mark has agreed to be the invention coach, that is the leader of a project. The first project we have, which is sort of not a technical project, doesn't involve a soldering iron, it's actually a legal uh, project. Take it away, Mark. Thanks, Rob. Uh, so as Rob mentioned, I'm an attorney. Um, most of my background in law was uh, in free software licensing. I used to work at SFLC and I do pro bono work for the Free Software Foundation. Uh, my day job is um, as an attorney as well with a company. The, the This project here is not an attempt to make a free software license or an open source software license. It's it's to make a, a license in a similar fashion to that that's applied specifically around medical devices. So um, it's kind of taking a step back and looking at what made free software, or open software, source software licenses successful and how can we get the same impact inside of like the medical device uh, community as well. Um, it's not actually a license yet. I know Helpful Engineering, I think some of those folks are on the call too. They're also looking at it. I think they're probably being a little bit more practical and direct in trying to create a license because they want to use it sooner. Um, this is a little bit further back and more of a thought project about like, what do you need to do to create a license that'll have the same kind of impact in a new market that free software licensing had in the IT market? Um, but basically, um, what this, this project is about doing is um, going from some, some premises that, you know, free software licenses allow volunteers to aggregate their, aggregate their contributions to help other people. Um, so how do we allow people who are interested in, in contributing to making better uh, medical devices that will help other people, um, how do we help them have an impact? Um, 
So, you know, there's some restrictions around it that I'm thinking about here is like, we want this to be about charitable. We want to create new opportunities for people creating medical devices to increase the amount of good that's being created. That's not necessarily motivated by the market. Um, so some caveats around this project. Um, I, have a, I have a background in technology. I was a terrible programmer. And as punishment, I ended up being a manager in IT for many years. Um, I'm not an expert in hardware. Um, I do own a circular saw, but that's about the extent of my hardware experience. Um, I think medical stuff is mostly gross. So when I meet Rob for dinner with my wife, I kind of tune them out as I talk about those kind of things. Um, but I do have an interest in intellectual property and building commons and how you motivate people to do charitable goods. So if anyone is experienced in manufacturing or medical device manufacturing specifically or with FDA approvals, because I'm not an FDA approval attorney, um, that would be the kind of person I would be interested in talking to or getting some contributions here. Because as with most legal fields, if you really want to do a good job with it, you really need to understand and the market. Um, and I have experience with uh, licenses that help create commons specifically around free software, free culture licenses, but not so much with the medical field. So um, if anyone with that kind of background who's interested in what I'm talking about, I would be interested in talking to you even if you're not an attorney. Um, so this project came from some conversations that I was involved in with Rob Reed and also Helpful Engineering about how do we make sure that when we ask volunteers to contribute to our projects, that our volunteers can have confidence that their contributions are gonna be used for charitable purposes. How do we help motivate them so that our volunteers don't feel like they're just subsidizing the research and development costs of, of large companies. Um, and we also wanna create a mark, we wanna create a, a commons where we're making this knowledge more available, right? So you do want to give this away for free so that somebody who's in need of a medical device, we can lower the cost, we can increase the amount of medical devices that are out there. But we also don't want a large company just to say, oh, great, I'll just take that for free and increase my profit margin. So there's kind Mark. of that tension there. Um, so the, the project, the screen you're looking at right now is really the first work product out of this is looking at who the actors are as I understand them in the medical device field. And we're in the process now of going through and looking at like what motivates these different people and what kind of leverage or contributions that charitable individuals, engineers and designers can create to kind of change how the market works and motivate people who are in that marketplace now to create open source or open device markets and participate with that. Um, and it really came uh, from a realization that I had a few years ago when I was reading a book on intellectual property that treated FDA approvals as a form of intellectual property. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a twist on what intellectual property is, but um, there's an opportunity to create some leverage around that. So um, that's really what this project is right now is looking at what leverages that we can have volunteer engineers create and can be aggregated so we can get the power of a community to create value that other people would, would want to change their behavior around and change their behavior in a way that would make medical devices more available to lower income individuals or impoverished people or people who just don't have access right now. Mark, um, this is Martin Smith. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, I have on a few occasions had an opportunity to put code in the public domain, say. Mm -hmm. um, and. Every time I've done that, I've investigated the, the new public license. Yep. And it's it, it, to me, it, it's hopeless because I have to let Richard Stallman tell me how to run my life for an hour and a half. So I always end up doing something like the Berkeley public license or some, some somewhat innocuous form that makes everybody happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I hear that a lot when I've talked to clients about like, which license do you use? Um, so Martin's question is really about, do I use a permissive license that basically lets people do pretty much whatever they want with it for very few restrictions or a copyleft license like the GPL that requires some kind of sharing back? Um, and to me, that question really comes down to is like, how much leverage do you have in the marketplace and what do you want? So if you don't have a lot of leverage, you're making a product that's pretty accessible, it's easy to replicate, you really can't ask that much of people condition using your work on that. Um, if you want people to use it, and they're like, well, I'll just go find it somewhere else. Like, why would I use a copyleft licensed device if I could just go find a permissively licensed device? They don't have to pay any cost. Um, on the other hand, if what you're creating is really kind of unique and you're adding a lot of value to the marketplace, 
I think, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying, listen, I'm letting you use this for free, literally for free in terms of, of capital costs. It doesn't cost you any money. You're avoiding a bunch of research and development costs. And in exchange, what I'm saying is that like, I want you to, you know, help me make my work available for free. Um, and there's lots of misconceptions. There's lots of truths about what those requirements are. Uh, personally, in my experience, I don't think they're that burdensome. I'm a big fan of copyleft licenses and GPL in the right context. Um, I think the Free Software Foundation is doing it right. And I think it makes a lot of sense to say, hey, I'm going to spend hundreds of hours, maybe thousands of hours creating knowledge that will help you make a product better. And all I'm asking you is I'm giving this away for free because I care about other people and I want to help them. And if you want to use what I'm creating, I'm asking you to help me help other people, help me share this um, and help contribute to that common knowledge base that helps other people as well. Um, hey, but thank you. You do have Mark. to be careful thank about you. how burdensome you get. Um, so uh, let's have a round of applause for Mark Jones um, stepping up to be the invention coach here. Um, this is a very interesting conversation and one close to my heart. But if we start talking about it, we will not complete this conference whatsoever.